Hello, and thank you for joining this Onc Live peer exchange titled Follicular Lymphoma Evolving Treatment Landscape. Despite that follicular lymphoma remains a chronic, incurable disease, outcomes are good for most patients with median su overall survival exceeding 12 years. Over the last 15 years, treatment approaches have drastically improved patient survival. However, for the subgroup of patients who have high risk disease and who develop early relapse or histological transformation, clinical outcomes after immune chemotherapy are still poor. Today, I'm joined by a group of my colleagues who are renowned experts in the field of lymphoma research. We will discuss evolving research surrounding the treatment of follicular lymphoma. We'll talk about how to incorporate newly available agents into our treatment approaches, and we'll highlight the studies from the 2018 ASH annual meeting. I'm Dr. Ian Flynn, and I'm the director of the Lymphoma Research Program at Sarah Cannon Research Institute in Nashville, Tennessee. Participating today are our distinguished panel are Dr. Nathan Fowler, Associate Professor in the Division of Lymphoma and Myeloma in the Division of Cancer Medicine at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Dr. Ajay Gopal, Professor of Medicine, Division of Medical Oncology at the University of Washington and member of the Clinical Research Division of the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center, Cancer Research Center. Dr. Scott Huntington, Assistant Professor, Section of Hematology, Department of Internal Medicine at the Yale University School of Medicine in New Haven, Connecticut. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's begin. So, um, so Nathan, let's start off by just discussing the follicular lymphoma, indolent lymphoma, and how they differ from um, from more aggressive lymphomas. Sure, sure. So, so, the good news is with follicular lymphoma, the outcomes have been improving for for quite some time, and now we see the overall survival with a lot of patients, well, actually, majority of patients with follicular lymphoma reaching in the decades, uh, and this is really uh, a reflection of the disease process uh, along with uh, some of the new therapy that, that's emerging. Most patients that are diagnosed with uh, low-grade lymphoma, uh, they present with very often, again, slow-growing disease, many times they're asymptomatic. And um, we now can kind of put them into different groups, uh, often uh, reflecting their different treatment options. For example, with uh, follicular lymphoma, we often separate them into, uh, you know, grade one, grade two, grade three, and the higher the grade, the, the more, I guess, aggressive cells are in a sample. We also know that we can subdivide other endolent lymphomas into different subtypes of marginal zone and others. And why that's really relevant is that um, some of the treatment options that are emerging often work better in some of these different classes of, of low-grade lymphomas and in follicular lymphoma. Um, we know that uh, follicular lymphoma is driven by this hallmark BCL2 mutation. But um, unfortunately, as we've talked about with, with you know, in many different settings, targeting that mutation is often not sufficient. We now know that uh, the mutational profile in, in follicular lymphoma is very, very heterogeneous, uh, not only across the disease, but even within different patients that have the same disease. Some of these mutations code for epigenetic factors like CREBP and EZH2. But I think the point is though, that uh, I think we're now learning that follicular lymphoma is probably much more complex than we initially thought. And it's not just this, you know, one driver like BCL2 that is kind of controlling the disease, but there are probably multiple things that are happening but which impact how the uh, disease progresses and how it impacts changes within the uh, microenvironment. What about, you know, we know that, that the lymphoma transforms. Is yeah. there, you know, can we predict that? Or what's driving that transformation? So the short answer is no. Um, you know, we've looked at several different clinical factors, the grade of the disease, for example, LDH. But as a rule, uh, we don't really have a good test when patients come into the clinic to predict who is going to transform. There have been some retrospective studies which suggest that rituximab exposure as, as part of the first-line treatment can reduce that risk. And the good news is that, uh, you know, there have been some studies recently, one of them published by the Italians last year, that suggests that the risk of transformation is going down. And in these Italian papers, um, the lifetime risk of confirmed transformation is only about 10%, which is you know, a, lot, a lot lower than what at least we used to be trained. Maybe we're better doctors, but I, I think that probably the therapy is impacting the risk of transformation. 